Welcome to Are You in the Know, an educational podcast brought to you by the Racine Unified School District. I'm Emily DeBaker, Chief of Staff for RUSD, and I'm thrilled to be helping keeping you in the know. This podcast is meant to keep you looped into what's happening in our classrooms, new things coming to the district, decisions that are being made, how they're made, and so much more. Today, we're so happy to be bringing you our first podcast of 2024 and introduce you to a program we offer called Project Search. We're joined today by Beth Knuth and Pamela Mitchell. Beth is our Project Search instructor, and Pam is a mother of a student who took part in this awesome program. I want to thank you both for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. Yes. Let's get started here with talking a little bit about what um, Project Search and our RUSD transition program is all about. Beth, can you just kind of explain what the program is and um, who who takes part in it? So Project Search was started over 20 years ago in Cincinnati um, at Children's Hospital. It was a woman there who was the head of nursing, and she's like, how do we not have uh, people to work to... Uh, do entry level stuff. And so she went to the local school district and said, Hey, can we work with you guys in some way to create a workforce? And so they did, they brought in students after they met these requirements of their graduation and kept their IEP. And they came in and they trained for a year in the hospital. And then they were hiring these students and they said, Hey, why don't we, if we don't have the, a place for them in the hospital, cause we filled them, what, what can we offer in the community? And it has grown so well that there are over 400 sites throughout the world. Some of the latest sites being in Iceland and Italy. Um, I just think that's incredible. So they're putting out a proven curriculum and that curriculum is what does it look like to be an adult? So they all get transportation and they come to us for the day. We start out the first three weeks of the school year in the training room. And in that training room, we talk about transitioning skills. We talk about how to behave in a work environment, what it looks like in a lunchroom. It's not high school anymore. It's adulting. Um, we talk about how to handle money, what it looks like to buy a car, all those wonderful, fun adult things. Um, after those three weeks, they start their first 10 week rotation. And when that starts, they are now in the training room from 8 to 8.30. And then from 8.30 to 1.30, they go into their first rotation. And from 1.30 to 2.30, they come back into the training room. And then they leave for the day on that RUSD bus. Um, I am not the only one that will be at Andis all the time. We also have a skills trainer and a job developer that is through, at this time, Goodwill. And she is there also, and we really form a nice partnership. Uh, we, we observe them on the floor. They have a mentor that's through Andis that they are with when they are in that, mentor, in that position on the floor. They are not with their peers, so they're really integrated into the work environment. They go to lunch with their coworkers. They have a beautiful lunch area at Andis. Um, so we also ask the interns to bring a lunch every day, just like you would when you go into the real, real working area. Um, after that 10 weeks, they come back into the training room for a week. We might do some reflection, continue with our curriculum of uh, budgeting or relationships or social, anything that is needed. Um, then we do a second 10 week rotation week in the road week in the training room third rotation 10 weeks and then we do a couple more days and they graduate they're done hopefully by this time if they have not already gotten a job out in the community um then it will be coming so their time done with RUSD is done at that time we have a beautiful beautiful graduation and they get their diploma and after that, then they still continue with that job, the, the skills trainer and the job developer. So that doesn't end. They still get that support out in the community. The requirements for DVR, though, is um, meet those education 
requirements because when you get in by us, any transition program, whether you're with myself or those other transition teachers, we don't grade. We don't have tests. Uh, you've met the requirement. We're now just looking at adulting. So we also ask that if you're going to take full advantage of the three years you would have in transition, that you choose Project Search to be your last year. Does that mean you have to do the other transition years? By no means. You, I have many interns that come straight out of high school and just want to do the, the Project Search and they're very successful. I have some that want to take full advantage and still continue until the age of 21. The goal is to give those skills that can transition to any job. So even if you as a student come to us and become an intern and you say, well, I don't want to work at a factory. That's not what it's about. It's about where do you want to work? This is personalized to that individual intern. There is discussions that are just between myself and the job developer and the intern and their family. They are involved in this. This is not exclusive like, oh, we're only going to look at you going working at McDonald's. No, where do you want to work? Now, we might be able to say, hey, yeah, you really like the idea of working in food? Well, let's look at many different areas in the food industry. So stuff like that, just what do they want? It sounds like such a cool program. I want mm -hmm. to um, kind of turn, let's turn to the star of our show, yeah. Max. Even mm -hmm. though Max isn't with us, his mom is. And so Pam, talk to us a little bit about, about Max's experience and his journey in Project Search. Max came to me about Project Search and was kind of trying to tell me exactly what it would entail. I was quite uncertain whether I felt that was a good fit or not, only because I was confused and was not familiar with Project Search versus a transitional program, which Max's older brother went through. Um, and Max and his brother are on different levels of ability. And so I was like, well, I don't quite sure that's going to work for you, Max. You know, I think maybe we should go a different route. Well, then they started to talk to me more during his IEPs about it. And when I find when Max and I finally got to go and take the tour at Andis, I was completely amazed, blown away. I did not expect anything that I was being told or saw at the Project Search tour. Um, I learned so much about what the program was about, what Max would experience. And when Max walked through the doors into the work area at Andes, his eyes just totally lit up. He was so excited to see all the machines and the people and just kind of what a workplace looked like inside. Um, differ from, you know, him working Six Flags and things like that when he was doing that. So he kind of helped me make that decision that, yeah, you know, why don't you go ahead and give this a try and and see where it brings you. And with all the support and all of the help, not only from Ms. Knuth and um, Goodwill Industries and Andis and all of their wonderful support there, Max was able to now have a position at a family owned cabinetry place here in Racine. And He's been there now. He'll be going on his second year. The place is amazing. He has wonderful support and he's just in his elements. He just loves it there. So um, it was a wonderful experience for him. That's so great. Tell us a little bit about Max. Max is 22 now and he has always been a go-getter. He's always... Um, wanted to try everything and anything. 
just to see whether he would like it. He likes to stay busy. Um, his high school years were his best years. He played football for four years. He wrestled for four years and he did baseball for two sadly got cut from the team and was a little disappointed, but then tried tennis. Um, only got to do that for a year because unfortunately then COVID hit. So, um, but he, he also was kind of a shy kid. Didn't really open up to people until he really gets to know you. And um, that was one of the things that I had told them that I'd like to see Max work on as he transitions into adulthood. So through Project Search, um, he was able to get that confidence built up and um, opened him up to not being afraid to talk to people because people are not going to be mad at you. They're not going to yell at you. It's okay to use your voice and let people know what you might need or um, any questions that you might have. That's so great. Beth, how have you or how had you seen Max grow in the program from when he walked in that first day to when he went through the graduation ceremony? And maybe not just Max, but all of the students that you see, you know, from start to finish. It's wonderful. Um, I like using Max as the example because also he was in our first year video and that is exactly what he says. Like, I'm not afraid to ask questions. It's so wonderful to see him walk in that first week into Andes, they are so nervous and scared and don't know how people are going to perceive them or welcome them. And we just bring them in and they are just like, I, I have an intern this year who says, it's like a family. I feel like I'm part of a family. I said, yeah, this is how work is. A lot of times you feel like part of a family and understand what it is that you want to so is that what you value? They're discovering their value. I had one intern one year say, I asked at graduation, what, is pro what did Project Search mean to you? He goes, I found my purpose. Uh, it's just so empowerful and empowering to, to see that. And it was really cool because uh, that first year too, I have a time where I invite past teachers family and we do an outside activity that the interns run. Well, I happened to invite a teacher that I worked with for many years in the elementary level. And she always talked about a student that she particularly liked in a good way, as we all have that student that's close to our heart. And she always wondered what happened to him. And she came to that and he was one of the students. And she said, every teacher should see this the growth that they can make, the growth that is made. Um, you know, so being someone who's fortunate to have worked from students from kindergarten up, and I see some of these students looping through now and never give up, never give up. And to see them come in this, they are so brave. Adults have a hard time going into a working area. We are giving them such an experience just walking through that door and seeing it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, that I was just going to, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I thought the same thing, like that's intimidating for adults, you mm -hmm. know, starting a new job and walking into a new place and mm -hmm. to be able to have, um, that support through the program and build those skills is, is wonderful. One of um, the things I, I'm so sorry. One of the no, things please. I do is at that first day, I have them write a letter to themselves on how they feel. And I don't look at it and I don't read it. And I just talk about some of the things you could put in that letter and how we're all feeling. And then I seal it up and I give it to them like their last day so they can reflect on how, you know, they started out scared and nervous and now they're so confident. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. So what about, um, so uh, uh, a student finishes the program and then is the main goal of upon graduation employability somewhere? Um, talk about that, that next step after uh, the year of project search. Oh, most definitely. And we are even looking, we start about the third rotation looking for those jobs in the community uh, that Max was one of them. He got his job during that third rotation. So he would come, he actually drives. So he would go to work and then come, or was it the other way around, Pam? 
um, go to work in the morning, six in the morning until yeah. 11. And then he would drive out to Andis yeah. and join you guys for the remainder of the day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so that is the goal. Pam, mm-hmm. talk about how did Max find the, um, an interest, did he have an interest in cabinetry or furniture or things like that retail, or was this just kind of, it fell into place and, and worked out? What was his experience and journey finding that job after project search? Well, when Max first went in, he really wanted to become a welder. That was his main dream to do. And um, as he started doing different things at Andis, another thing that he thought he would really like to do would be working with the robots. Um, Because one of the ladies at Andis had told him that the robots were misbehaving, so they needed to be watched and they were throwing (laughs) parts. So that story for some reason stuck and intrigued Max so much. <laughs> so, That's awesome. so he kind of went along and he did a whole bunch of different types of jobs. One of them being sanitation um, and others was working with, um, uh, I'm trying to think Miss Knuth, was it um, putting parts together? I remember that one of them was the blades, I believe. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and then there was a few others, but those are the two that really, mm-hmm stick out to me for some reason. Yeah. Um, the, the way Max came about getting the position at the place that he's at is um, they, Tina from Goodwill, i um, sorry, sometimes I'm bad with names, but Tina from <laughs> Goodwill, she was the one that worked with Max, his job coach, and she helped him with his resumes. She helped him with looking on LinkedIn and things like that to prepare him to write a resume and apply online for jobs. He applied online at the place that he's at. And um, they pretty much got right back to him. I, I swear it was maybe 15 minutes later. Oh, wow. They were so... Um, I guess, intrigued, for lack of a better word, with his resume. And then within, I I think it was less than a week, he had an interview with the owner. They did throw out there, you know, the fact that Max did have a disability and explained what that was. Um, They all agreed that Max would be a perfect fit in the family. So, Max found out pretty much the next day that he was hired and um, Tina went with him for a couple of weeks to kind of give him the support and things that he needed. And the owner of the place um, said, we got it from here. So um, Tina and Max kind of ended their journey together, um, which was sad because Tina was amazing, but um, it, gave Max that extra um, boost of confidence that he was learning from day one, um, walking into Project Search. It really helped him expand that. It helped him, um, you know, just have an extreme amount of confidence. Sometimes I, I kind of joke with him and I tell him that he's a little overconfident sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so that's how he landed the job there. It was, um, I just remember getting the phone call from Tina and she told me, you know, her and Max both told me about how he applied at this cabin tree place and um, that they got, and she said, if we hear anything, I'll let you know. So I was figuring, you know, turn around days. for most places yeah. a day or two, you know. 15 minutes later, got the phone call and she was like, you're not going to believe this. He's got an interview and everything. And I was like, wow. So when he sat down at his interview, Tina did go with him for a little bit of added um, support. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman that interviewed him said that he was really impressed with Max's resume and was completely um awed by Max's well-roundedness. He said Max seemed like quite the go-getter, somebody that they really wanted in their um, facility. So 
Max has actually learned quite a bit since he's been there. He's learned how to sand, how to paint, um, how to do skids. And uh, he wants to eventually learn how to run the forklift. And they told them him that um, they would be more than happy to help him with learning and um the testing and etc that he would need in order to be able to do that so awesome. um so when you get new kitchen cabinets max is installing them for free right <laughs> i would hope so <laughs> so i think you know as parents all we want in life really is for our kids to feel supported and be successful and in walk into every day you know with confidence and and that feeling of you know, just being supported as a mom, how, how does it make you feel when you think back to like Max's educational journey and getting to be part of the football and tennis and then into the transition program and the support through Andis and Project Search and now to see where he's at now? What has that been like for you and, and Max and your family? Well, to be honest, um, there were some, you know, there were some bumpy roads where I was told um, early on because Max did have like um, a form of epilepsy where he did have seizures and stuff. And I was told that he would never grow out of those, um, but he did. And um, I was told that, you know, he more than likely would only be washing tables at a McDonald's. I was told that. So that frustrated me more than ever because I'm like, no, he's young. You are not going to tell me what my child is capable mm -hmm. of doing or not doing. Um, and Max made it kind of easy because ever since he was younger, he just, like I said, was a go-getter. He didn't ever let his disability get in his way. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes some of the specialists and doctors got me to get in his way because they're <laughs> like, don't let him play contact sports. Don't let him go sledding. Don't let him do this because of his, um, you know, epilepsy or people would say to me, well, you know, he's not going to be able to go get a regular job because of his disability. And I'm like, no. Um, so yeah, Max made it so easy because he wanted to learn things. He wanted to try. Um, and I think a lot of his coaches also through the years, um, with his football, his wrestling, um, and his tennis, and baseball and he's also done judo and he's done um taekwondo and now he's in karate so i think just him having that go-getter spirit and that nothing's gonna let me down nothing's gonna stop me he made it easy for um us raising him let's just say <laughs> because yeah. he always showed us what he was capable of doing and we kind of just helped support him, followed his lead, and just always told him that no matter what, nothing's impossible. You keep reaching for those stars, and eventually you're going to be right where you want to be. And I feel that at this point right now, that is exactly what he tells me every day as mom. I'm so glad that I have the job that I have and I work with the people that I work with. And he has not forgotten any of his teachers that have impacted him. Um, a lot of them still see him out and about and they will talk, you know, briefly talk with them. Or I work at one of the um, kitchens at one of the RUSD schools and some of his former teachers will ask me about him. Um, so not only did they make an impact in his life, but somehow, some way he's done the same for them. So it's, it's been a amazing journey that I wouldn't change an ounce of that journey. And I'm so grateful for Project Search because had I not um, 
changed my bullheadedness and my stubbornness. <laughs> um, he may not be where he is now. And that kind of makes me sad to think that without that tour at Andes, his future could have been in a completely different way. And who knows what that would have looked like. So I'm grateful for everybody at RUSD, the Project Search and Andes and Goodwill Industries because they helped Max become the um, adult that he is now. And that that's the whole part of the the whole reason for the program, right, Beth? Like that, she summed it up perfectly. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Well, you guys have just been wonderful. You can, honestly, I know that, you know, we're on microphones and in different rooms, but you can sense the passion that you both have for the program. And just hearing Max's story is so inspiring. We do have a video that highlights Project Search on our website, rusd.org. It's also on our YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, just to get a little bit more familiarity with Project Search and what it's all about, and then head to our website to, to fill out that application if you are interested. Beth, Pam, I just really appreciate you both joining us today and sharing your stories and your knowledge and experience. Um, I know I certainly was inspired by it and think this is one of the one of the better programs that we have in our USD. I love that we can offer it to to our students. So thank you both so much for taking the time to come and chat with me today. Thank you again for having us. Awesome. Thank and you, tell Pam. Max I'm I'm coming for him to get some specialized wood for my for my house remodel. <laughs> I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, thank you for joining us and watch for additional episodes of Are You in the Know coming later in 2024.